Skipjack is a block cipher that was developed by the NSA. It had been classified until 1998, after which it was declassified and its design was made public. Skipjack takes 64-bit words and encrypts them with an 80-bit key. For a very interesting article about why Skipjack was declassified, you can visit this link. For a general reference for the main document, why don't we do a search for Skipjack NIST PDF and we'll find the official documentation of the algorithm. We're going to be focusing on section B, which describes the encryption and decryption process. And our main goal of this video is to implement this in Python. So let's create an empty directory called skipjack. Let's cd into it and create an empty file called skipjack.py. And let's open it in sublime text and start coding. Why don't we just copy the URL of this reference document as a comment at the top of the file. And let's begin by calling our class skipjack. We'll define a constructor with no parameters. One variable we'll need is the S box that's contained in the description. It's denoted by capital F. This must be an older PDF file because I couldn't copy and paste from it. So I just had to unfortunately just copy each value down. And since it's an 8-bit S box, there'll be 256 values there. And why don't we just call, why don't we make a little function to define F, called define F. And let's fix a little spelling mistake here. We can make a little test to make sure that everything is entered all right for F. Notice in the document they say, for example, 7A should be sent to D6. We can test that. Why don't we initialize our skipjack class and print out the hex version of F of 7A. After fixing a couple simple mistakes here, we see that some syntax errors we see that we do get D6 as desired. When we look at the algorithm, we see that we're going to need four 16-bit words, and we'll denote those by W1, W2, W3, and W4, and we'll just initialize these variables to be zero. We'll see more about them soon. We're going to need three helper functions. The first one is a function to append the four 16-bit words, W1 through W4, into a single 64-bit word. The way we'll do that is just by shifting each of W1 through W4 an appropriate amount to the left, and then we'll just OR them all together to make a 64-bit word. The next helper function is to take a given 64-bit word and split it into four 16-bit parts and store those values in W1 through W4. Uh, I want to just point out that I'm, I'm making a syntax error right here. When I and this with 0xff, it should really I should really be anding it with 0xffff. I need those four f's in order to get a 16-bit value, right? With two f's, I only get eight bits. In other words, a byte. I'll fix this syntax later. Syntax error later. Um, Notice I also forgot to delete the bit shift operator on W4 there. We'll fix that in a moment. The last little helper function is just to print out the status of the variables W1 through W4 and to print out the round number. We'll talk more about the round number very soon. Now the main function we need to write is the encryption function. This is an encryption uh, algorithm after all. The parameters for this function will be the plain text and the key. The plain text will be 64-bit integer, and we're going to interpret the key as a list of 10 bytes, which is equivalent to an 80-bit word. In this algorithm, there's going to be 32 rounds. There's two rules, rule A and rule B. The way it's going to work is the first eight rounds are rule A, the next eight rounds are rule B, the next eight are rule A again, and then the final eight are rule B. 
So we go back and forth between rule A, rule B, rule A, and rule B, and we do eight rounds of each for a total of 32 rounds. We're going to start by taking the plain text and splitting it into four 16-bit values, which will be stored in W1 through W4. We're going to define a local variable called round, which goes from 1 to 32, and inclusive. So in Python, we write range from 1 to 33. Now, when the round is between 1 and 8, or 17 and 24 inclusive, we do rule A. When the round number is between 9 and 16, or 25 and 32, we're going to do rule B. So let's, we'll begin coding rule B, rules A and B in a moment. But to finish the encryption process, the result of W1 through W4 after the 32nd round is the value of the ciphertext. And we return the appended version of that as the final result of the encryption process. Both rule at A and rule B will take the round number and the key as parameters. When we redefine the values of W1 through W4, we're going to have to create some temporary variables in order to avoid conflicts. We're just going to be following the definition in the documents here to uh, pass from the old W values to the new W values through each round. Notice as well that these, the definition of rule A and rule B requires the definition of another function called G. We'll be coding that in a moment. Also, notice that we XOR with the round number. That's what they mean in the document when they write counter K. They write K for the round number. We're just using the more descriptive variable round. But for them, K is the round number. We can test our code right now. Maybe we can try. Uh, we can notice in the document they have a plain text. And it's 64 bits. What they call the crypto variable is what we call, we're going to call the key, the key. The key is 80 bits, but we're going to interpret it as 10 bytes, a list of 10 bytes. And let's define CT to be the final ciphertext that's, uh, cipher that's output by the algorithm. We can test the code a little bit here by printing out the status of W1 through W4 as we pass through the rounds. And after everything's working and verified, we can always delete uh, that little piece of print, that, the code that prints out the status of W1 through W4 each round. The ciphertext, of course, depends on the given plain text and the given key. Notice we need a little comma here on line 45. Uh, fix those syntax errors I mentioned before. So we delete that bit shift operator around W4 there, and we need to and these values with 0xffff, four of them, in order to get a 16-bit output. And capitalize W on split words, and now we see that we still need to write function G. All right, the function G takes in the round number, the key, and an arbitrary 16-bit word W as inputs. Let's refer to the definition of G in the document. And like I said before, what they're calling K is what we're calling the round number. Let's define G, lowercase g now, to be an empty list of six zeros. The values of G0 up to G6, excuse me, G5, will be the bytes, will be bytes. So in other words, they'll be eight bits each. So the input W is 16 bits, but the values of lowercase g0 up to g5 will be will be bytes, 8 bits each. Notice our indexing for lowercase g is starting at 0 through 5, whereas theirs is going from 1 to 6. That's just because we're starting our counting at 0. To start off, we're going to define g0 and g1 to be the higher and lower bytes of w, respectively. In other words, we split the 16-bit value W in half. The left half is G0 and the right half is G1. The value of J is going to be the index of the keys of the key we're at. We want to start when the round is one, which is the very first round we're doing, we want J to be zero. And that explains why we have round minus one in our code there. 
Also, we always need J to be between zero and nine. So as we proceed in the rounds and we increment J, we always have to mod it out by 10 to make sure that it is in the proper range. So now let's let I go from two to five inclusive. So we're defining now G2 through G5. The definition of GI is going to use the substitution box F and the Jth byte of the key and the two previous values of G, namely GI minus one and GI minus two. So that's recursively defined. And every time we pass through one step, we increment J and we need to mod it by 10 to keep it in the proper range. And then the last two values there, G4 and G5, are going to be the return value of capital G. And we just append them into a 16-bit value, and that will be the output for G. And now when we run it, we see that we do get the proper output as described in the document. Notice the last line, which is round 32, is the final encryption, is the final ciphertext of the encryption algorithm and it does match what the document tells us that it should be. So it looks like things are working good on the encryption side, and now we just need to write the decryption algorithms, which are really just the reverse of what we just did. All right, so let's write the decrypt function now. It's going to take the parameters ciphertext, which is again a 64-bit word, and the key, which is a list of 10 bytes. This is entirely analogous to the encrypt function except now the input is the ciphertext and we're looking to retrieve the plain text. The first thing we're going to do is to split the ciphertext into four 16-bit words and we'll store them in W1 through W4. This time we're also going to range over 32 rounds except we're going to start at 32 and decrement by one until we get down to round number one. Just as before, when we had A and B, we have this time rule uh, rules A and B as well, but they're inverses. And in order to undo the encryption, we're going to first do eight rounds of B inverse, which will occur from rounds 32 to 25, then eight rounds of A inverse, which will be rounds 24 to 17, then eight rounds of B inverse again, which is from round 16 to 9, and then finally, eight rounds of A inverse, which will be from rounds to A till one. And let's take a look how A inverse and B inverse are going to be coded. They'll really be very similar to that of A and B. We'll just refer to the documentations for their definitions here. And just as before, we create some temporary variables CI in order to avoid any conflicts. When we see the code of A inverse and B inverse, we notice another function which we have to write, which is G inverse. And it'll be, again, quite similar to G, except we'll be working backwards. Again, we'll have a, a, a list of six bytes. And, but this time, we'll start with defining G4 and G5 and work our way down. So G5, G4 will be the low byte, or excuse me, G4 will be the high byte of W and G5 will be the low byte. And this time our index J will be decremented every round. And we're gonna work backwards this time on the key, vari key variable index. So after defining G4 and G5, we're going to let I range from three down to zero, inclusive. In other words, we'll define G3, G2, G1, and G0 in that order. And just as the definition of capital G, um, GI will be defined using the S box F, uh, the Jth byte of the key, and the two previously defined G values. And then after we define GI recursively, we'll decrement J and mod it by 10. And then the final output of G inverse will be the concatenation of G0 and G1, where G0 is the higher byte. So we can test this decryption function now on our ciphertext and we'll, with uh, our key, and we're hoping to get back the original plain text. So just a small syntax error here. We need to change reverse to reversed. And when we run it, we see that everything is working. We're able to encrypt a plain text 
using a key, and then using the decrypt function, we're able to get back the original plain text. All right, so that's the implementation of the Skipjack encryption algorithm.